Okay, so in yesterday's video, I was showing you that I just got this new, this Craftsman lawnmower. Now, I already had one, and hopefully tomorrow we'll get some parts on that one, and we can get the engine back on it and see how it does. We've got to do a governor and an oil slinger on that one. This one, I, uh, the guy said it was running, but it had a dead battery. You know, you, you try to trust people, but it's a good idea not to. Trust but verify or something like that, right? So this has got a Kohler engine. Now, I've got to be honest. I've never worked on a modern-day Kohler engine. Uh, wheel horse used to have a Kohler engine. My grandpa, me, and dad, all of us worked on that little Kohler engine. And I love that thing. But these are so much different. And they're a heck of a lot different than Briggs. I mean, the principle is the same. But that's about it. So on a Briggs & Stratton, you have an ignition coil that has one ground wire shutoff. Let's see if I can't find one in the trash real quick. So this is an ignition coil. It's got your spark plug wire on it. And it has a ground tab. This little tab here plugs in. And anytime a safety switch is engaged or you turn the key off, this grounds this unit out and it stops sending electricity to the spark plug. You can disconnect this and check your spark without worrying about the safety switches and all that stuff. So if you want to know if you got a safety switch problem or ignition coil problem, disconnect that wire and you'll, you'll find out. Check the spark. If it's sparking, then you know the ignition coil's good, but the there's a switch or something not working correctly. Well, this is an electronic nightmare to me. So I had to spend a lot of time last night researching my, you know, all the things about it. First of all, this is an older modern day engine. This was made in the 90s. And since then, they've made several revisions because they realized that electronics are terrible so they've basically kind of went back to the original ignition coil module thing so the first thing we got a problem with is the the key switch is bad so I've ordered a new one and I'm really not going to do any other maintenance on this until that's in now the other thing we had an issue with was the battery was dead this is all important uh, for the moral of this story. I did get it charged up. And it uh, works really well. Now you got to remember that, well a couple things. Your battery, if it's completely dead, modern day battery chargers won't charge them. If, if there's like six volts in it, it won't charge. It'll just say bad. So what I had to do to make this work was I hooked it up to my solar panel battery system. Now I have 12 volt system so I just took jumper cables ran it from my house batteries to this and I let it charge up to about 12 volts because it was at 6 then I was able to hook the battery charger up to it now somebody's going to say why didn't you just charge it with the solar panels because it would have never gotten totally charged with the solar panel system I'm constantly using electricity freezer kicks on computers run you know those kind of things so I wanted to get a full charge on this so once I got it to 12 I think 12.1 volts I put the battery charger on it, let it run for several hours, charged up, battery charger shut off, everything was charged. So now all we got to do is make sure that it holds a charge. The, the reason this is important was I was trying to jump it with another battery I had. And so what I was doing, instead of hooking it up to the, the jumper cables to this battery, because the switch is broke, I was just taking the, I, I hooked the ground up, to the negative of the battery, ground up to the engine here, positive to the battery, and then I would hit the positive to this. That turns the starter on. What I wanted to see is if we had spark. I thought I could get it to start, but if I took the ground off the ignition coil, but nothing worked. I couldn't get a spark on anything. So I, I basically gave up yesterday. And I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and get the switch. And then when I get the switch, then I'll, I can go back and check everything. So I went and did a lot of research on this. Well, first of all, 
like I told you, that ignition coil has two of those little brackets on there that you can tabs or whatever you want to call it, and it had two different wires. One of them is the shutoff wire. The other one is runs straight to the the 12 volt system. It has to have electricity in order to work. That's a big downside considering I didn't have a battery. Now, like I said, I was trying to jumper the whole system. So I didn't have 12 volts going to that. Then I disconnected the ground and I didn't know at the time, but I also disconnected that 12 volt thing. It wouldn't have made any difference. I didn't have any electric going to it. The problem is, is what the heck is this thing? Well, this is called, I'm, I'm gonna butcher the name. So I probably won't even say it right, but it's, it's called SAM, S-A-M. And it's like a smart ignition timing or something, I don't know, module. This was made in the 90s. It's an important part of the subject here. And it hooks up to that ignition coil somehow or another. These were notorious for going bad. They don't sell these anymore. This is obsolete. So when I went to the parts page, I immediately got confused because the graphics, the pictures, showed a box. And it, it said like 25 for the parts list. So you scroll down the part list and all of a sudden, well, that's not it. It wasn't, that wasn't the same thing. So it didn't make any sense. And boy, these rings are, well, I'll get to that in a minute. So I started researching YouTube and everything. And I realized that Kohler decided this was a bad design. So they have a new design, a newer design, I should say, for this engine. Now, all the other Kohler engines, they've got a second design, a, you know, revision. So this was the original. The one, the, then there's a redesign, revision two, let's call it. And then that stopped on this machine, but then you got revision three on all the other machines because the revision two didn't work. So what it is, it's just a, a, a timing module that goes to the spark plug. It doesn't work on the magnets or anything. It, 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 it's just a timing module. I'm not really sure I understand the science behind this, but that thing was $200. Well, then I, this, is, this project is, is beyond my capabilities because I can't buy it because I wouldn't be able to resell this thing. It, it wouldn't be worth it. So I uh, went to aftermarket and they do have aftermarket ones with good reviews. So if this is bad, then I will get that aftermarket product. That being said, there is a way to check if my ignition coil is bad. If it's just the ignition coil, now I guess I should back up. This thing right here, there is a tester that you can test it with that is made by Kohler. The only thing it is used for is this. This only. And that tester is $200. <laughs> so, uh, why not just get a new one? I mean, it's the same price. <laughs> now, you can buy this box on eBay used. Again, $200. Everything's $200 when it comes around this box. So, I would like to test the ignition coil, even though I don't have an ignition switch. I don't have the, the ignition coil. The thing I showed you was in the trash. That's what I don't have a battery hooked up. I don't have anything, but I want to see if that ignition coil is good. Now, I may not have a problem at all. I may be worrying for nothing. I may get the switch put back in and it starts right up. And it's a huge possibility because remember, the battery was dead. I was bypassing the whole system. Now, on a Briggs, you can bypass the system. I've done it. You cannot run on a Briggs, let's say, let's say you can jump the battery, you can jump the lawnmower from your truck without a battery in it. You just hook the battery cables up to the, ba the cables that hook to the battery without a battery in it, start it, take the jumper cables off, and it runs. You could not do that with this one. It would shut off the ignition coil because it doesn't have any um, electricity going to it. So I had a bad battery. I was trying to jump her so that I wasn't going to get any spark regardless. But I do want to test. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm getting an ohms meter here in a few minutes. It should be in the UPS. And I can check the ohms on it. Now, 
it's kind of complicated. It's not complicated. It's easy to do, but you got to have the chart in front of you. So I looked the chart up online, and I'll look on my phone as I'm doing the testing. So this is a voltage regulator. I forgot to tell you about it. I just took it off. We took the bolts off of it. So this has a voltage regulator. Briggs don't have one of these. This is unique to Kohler. This is like the, the cars of, I don't know, well, I know back in the day, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, they used to have voltage regulators. I don't know about today, but that's crazy. Okay, so this should lift up now. And it won't come all the way off because there's all kinds of wires hanging up. But I don't need it all the way off. Just need to lift it up. Okay, so there's the ignition coil. And here, like I was telling you, it has two tabs on it. One is the cutoff, the black wire one. So this one should... Uh, we should be able to take this one off and test it. But again, I don't have the battery or the, the ignition switch, so I'll test it with the ohms meter. Any other time, it would be just a lot easier to test it with the taking the, the ground off, checking your spark plug for spark. All right, so I got the ohms tester. The first thing I'm gonna do, since I only have one camera, is I'm gonna show you how to test it. First, you come over here to like the screw, on the side, I'm gonna put it on this side because it's easier to reach and I won't be in the way of the camera. And then you see these tabs here? You're gonna to touch those tabs with the, the positive of your ohms tester. So we'll, we'll do that one. We'll do that one. So that's uh, number two. So when you look at your graph, on your piece of paper, you're gonna hit this one. This is one to four. So you, this is four over here. I've set that I'm touching over here. So that's four. So there's one. And then there's two, and then you're going to do your spark plug wire, and then again you'll come to four. Now, I'm going to show you the ohms tester. So, we're going to come to the lowest setting with the squeal on your multimeter, and then I'll go one to four. It says 140, one to two. 430 and then finally I said 4 to 2 so and then this one is 4 to 3 and that's 871 now I looked at the graph I cannot find a graph for this old ignition coil so I'm using a Kohler graph it's on my phone here See if you can see that. You may not be able to see it there, maybe. Anyway, so I'm running a little low on every setting except the spark plug wire itself. I had a 140, I'm supposed to get a 180. I had like a 430, I'm supposed to get a 590. And then I'm supposed to get 8,000 to 40,000. And I got 8,000. So that last one was the only one to spec. What that tells me is, is one, I don't have the right chart. But two, if I did have the right chart, I would be getting some spark. Maybe not enough, but some. So, since I don't have any spark, it tells me one of two things. Either my battery, I told you yesterday, wasn't hooked up, or that box is bad. So, when I get the battery hooked up and I get the ignition switch put in, I will try to start it or at least check for a spark if I don't have a spark then then I know that the box is bad but at least that eliminated the ignition coil as the problem because up until this point I had no idea what was bad it could have been the ignition coil it could have been that box I have no idea 
or it could just be that I didn't have the battery hooked up, of course. So I'm glad I've got this multimeter. Now I can check for uh, safety switches. If they don't work, I can, uh, you know, check for voltage. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was working on this. So if I can inspire you to do research so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.